What's up, y'all? So today I want to talk about something a little bit different, and that is going to be the fast fashion industry, thrifting, and how many metric tons of clothing and fabric textile waste we get rid of every single year, and how this one factor could be the biggest proponent to actively killing this precious planet that we live on. So if you guys know me, you know I love thrifting. I love going to a good flea market and a garage sale is something I absolutely never passed up. Actually, what I just came from today was thrifting this morning for about three hours with my mom, where we spent over a hundred and forty some dollars on thrifted stuff that retailed all together upwards of hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of dollars. I actually got one jacket that was a purple and black rose print blazer with the original tag still under on it that retailed for over a hundred dollars. I actually got these here pink pants that fit me perfectly with the tags brand new still on it and I got that sucker for three dollars. I got that blazer for three dollars and I got an entire tea set. So this is something that is very important to me and I love to do. And I wanted to talk about how we as Americans contributing to the fast fashion industry are kind of hurting our planet here. So if you guys didn't know, the fast fashion industry would be corporations and companies um, like Sheen or Nova. These organizations that just hop on a trend really fast, they make their clothing out of sweatshops over in foreign countries in Asia and then send it over to America to be sold for pennies on the dollar of what it actually costs to make. So these are some statistics here for you guys. Up to 100 billion new garments are made each and every year. That includes Nike, that includes Louis Vuitton, that includes Sheen. All of the brands that we know and we talk about. But I would love to know, how much goes to waste? Well, basically for every garment that's made, another garment gets thrown away. The world produces 92 million tons, tons of textile waste every single year. Now you might be thinking, well, when I donate it to places like Salvation Army or Goodwill, it's actually getting a second life. You would be surprised to find out that corporations like Goodwill that gets literally all of their inventory for free, upcharges it 100%, they actually aren't the most morally correct industry out there and still a lot of stuff that you donate there does in fact end up in landfills eventually. We have a truckload every single second that's ending up in these landfills and listen I'm not a tree hugger, I'm not particularly a hippie and I'm definitely not you know a PETA liberal person but I do care about our planet and I do care about you know one-time use plastics which are terrible for the environment. This is why when you have the ability to burn your paper and your cardboard waste and instead of throwing it into a trash can that'll go into a dump truck, that'll go to a landfill and then sit there and rot, you should do that. That's why country people actually, in my opinion, care for the environment more than um, the city people, but whatever. Textile production causes 42 million tons of plastic waste per year, and that only contributes to just 9% of the annual microplastics that pollute our ocean. Before everyone starts getting on to me, I was not particularly the stop using plastic straws, save the turtles, uh, visco girl with their metal straws, but I will say, again, one time we use plastics, your sporks, your chipotle containers, all of the plastic that we get out of fast food, it does go somewhere and it doesn't degrade as fast as these corporations would like us to admit. Fun fact, if you guys noticed, Sprite actually rebranded their classic lime green clear bottle to a white one. Why that was? Well, they might say, oh, it was just rebranding. It was actually because that bottle is so distinct and well known that when there were pictures circulated around the internet of, you know, the trash islands floating around the Atlantic Ocean or all of the rivers in India that are completely filled with trash, those Sprite container bottles are just very, very identifiable. So changing it to a clear bottle obviously was in their favor. So some facts about fast fashion. This comes from earth.org, but I wanted to talk about the 1.2, one, sorry, 
2.6 million tons of return clothes end up in landfills as far as the 2020 survey goes. So when you purchase things from Belk or JC Pennies, maybe you didn't take the tags off of it and then you return it, it's actually cheaper for these organizations to throw it in a landfill than it is to just resell it to somebody else who might wear this item. I would also like to talk about the fact that these big chain corporations would rather destroy product, purposely cut it up, rip it up, spray paint it, and throw it in their landfills and in their dumpsters rather than just simply donating it to a homeless shelter or a woman's shelter or a men's shelter. I personally, here's a fun fact about me, I'm a dumpster diver. I have been dumpster diving since I was like 10 years old and I would ride my bikes around our neighborhood on trash day and go get all the old rugs and all the old cool plastic containers and the totes and the things that I could find out of the trash. A few months ago, I actually decided to go around to all of our local clothing chains and businesses and go look through their dumpsters. And you would not believe the amount of perfectly fine brand new product that's in the dumpster, but the employees were told to, you know, shatter it, spray paint it, break it, cut it, rip it so nobody else can use it instead of donating it. I mean, we've all seen the TikTok videos, right, of the Duncan employees having to dump out dozens upon dozens upon dozens of donuts every night because for some reason we live in a society today where it's better to throw perfectly good food in the trash than to go take it down to a homeless shelter or pass it out because, you know, we like to just, we're so crazy in America. We just go after everybody. So you might be asking yourself, okay, well, if I can't purchase clothes from JCPenney's or Mardell's or whatever, what am I supposed to do? Thrift, okay? This is my all-time favorite pastime that I absolutely adore. Some might even say I have an addiction. Pretty much everything that I'm wearing today is stuff that I got from thrift stores. These pants, $3. These earrings, 25 cents. Go thrifting. But... I'm also sketchy about corporations like Goodwill because these places are known for, number one, not having the best work environment and having prejudices against certain types of people. And they also are kind of theft. I mean, let's be honest, Goodwill is a freaking scam. I go there every once in a while, but I like to find the mom and pop thrift stores and antique malls and places like that where I can find amazing good deals because they exist and you get to give old stuff a brand new life. So today I actually wanted to react to a video that's talking about the thrifting in our community and how it is going to be the way that we save the planet. So. It's one of the hottest trends in fashion. It is. Without a second to spare, here's Serena Altschul. Okay, I gotta turn I off this I though. I got this for like 40 bucks. Alia Alberwine 40 bucks, girl. loves fashion, but hardly ever pays full price. What portion of your wardrobe would you say is secondhand? About 60 to 70% of my, my closet is, is uh, secondhand. You can find things that maybe somebody bought at full price and they never wore it and that happens you get a to lot. have it for a quarter of the price and as someone who loves fashion there's no better feeling <laughs> Alberwani, a Houston I like getting doctor, better than a quarter of the price of deals like these jeans shopping were like habits. 60 70 so bucks and I got them for that I love three. that That's I also well less than 25% secondhand shopping is one of fashion's fastest growing trends <gasps> the furs how big is the secondhand clothing market oh, I love that. It's a, a $35 billion market and growing. Billion. $35 billion. It's billion. really, really big With a B. Chris Homer is co-founder and chief operating officer of Thread Up. It's one of dozens oh, I've of, heard of this. consignment shops allowing consumers to buy and sell unwanted clothing. I love that. We're listing items love every that. minute of every day, all day long. 100,000 plus items a day. Instead of digging through racks of clothes, consumers can browse right on their phones. The clothes, on the other hand, are held at thread-up distribution sites around the country where they're inspected, photographed, and eventually shipped to new owners. The things pick up even I love this concept, the yes, but I'm also time to clean out at digging home, through the well thrift racks at like a little old ladies thrift store is like therapy. Another is the generational shift where Gen Z and millennials 
are really becoming native thrifters in how they consume. Mm -hmm. The importance of the environmental impact that people are having really it's has true. become even more in the forefront of people's minds. Right now, the fashion industry is probably the third most polluting industry. It's it so five bad. Ten percent of the world's carbon. Allison Summer is vice president. If you guys were curious about what type of fabric uses the most water to create, and it's brick jeans. And water high end consignment shop. So, if you had a magic wand and you could change something in the fashion industry today, what's the first thing you would do? Produce Don't throw less. Away so much. Produce less. That too. Many clothes. In fact, about 85% of clothing in the U.S., including donations, ends up in incinerators in or landfills, mostly overseas. Okay, pause there for a second. So actually, I kind of have a different opinion on the whole incinerator thing. I would rather incinerate clothes that I knew were going to go into a landfill than let it go to a landfill because when you think about it, a little bit of, you know, ash and soot is not going to hurt the environment as much as having literal millions upon millions of metric tons of plastics and fabrics and polyesters and spandexes doing like what this is literally right here. Just festering disease and polluting the environment and turning our beautiful planet into a landfill. I'd rather burn things. the items that hit a landfill could be reworn in their current form. So it's really yeah. just a problem of not necessarily knowing what else to do with an item that you're not using anymore. Summer says she hopes this inspires consumers to rethink their own shopping style. Oh, those are cute shoes. See you later. In a way, you guys broke the hardest part of the cycle, which is the stigma yeah. of clothes yeah. being bought a yeah. second time. It's cool to wear secondhand now. You're finding a beautiful item. Okay, I was never a part of like that generation or even people who believe that wearing secondhand clothes is gross. Personally, I think it's more gross to wear clothes that were probably made by a seven-year-old chi child in China than I think that it's gross to wear clothes that were owned by a little old lady down the street. Like, my style these days is very diverse. Right now, I'm in more of, like, a Western chic style. But, like, the things that I bought today at the thrift store, I bought 90s windbreakers. One with the original tag from the 90s still on it. I bought some, uh, like, cable knit sweaters with, like, rhinestones sewed all over it. <laughs> I bought that purple and black trench coat with the original tag still on it. I got these jeans. I got a buttload of earrings because I love myself an obnoxious earring. And cups and tea sets, like... And I like sort of knowing the history behind it, or maybe not knowing the history, because you never know, like, who wore this? Like, it could have been someone actually really cool. I personally also like to go look in, like, the men's section, because there's always some really cool stuff over there, and I wear a lot of men's clothing, because they have some cute stuff that I can style the way I want. But, like, there's always some, like, military, like, Desert Storm camos, or maybe some, like, jungle camo. And as a military brat, like, I love that kind of stuff. Whenever I see it, I just, like, buy it all because there are projects I can do with those. I can, cut it, I can cut that up and make gifts for military people with them. But also, I really love, like, the military camo look. Like, what servicemen, like, wore this? And you just don't know because a lot of times they give them to Goodwill with, like, their name patches ripped off so you, like, couldn't do research and find out. Although one time I found a World War II Army green jacket that had the original, like, United States Army surplus number on it, and it was a legit from, from World War II. I don't know who wore it. All I know is a really cool piece of history, and now it's mine. But let's keep going. I feel good in that you got a great deal on and that's helping the planet. Look at you, ready for a party. And what's more I'm not forward a thrifter to find name brands like this. I like finding weird stuff. See, look, the jeans. The jeans, 2,000 gallons of water to make one pair of jeans. Literally just said that, did I not? That's crazy. That is literally insane. And you know what? I think this, is, this isn't maybe, you know a very important hot topic to a lot of people, but it's something that's important to me and I want to make more people aware of how 
disgusting the fashion industry is and that there are a lot better ways that we can find really cool pieces of clothing and be sustaining the planet at the same time. Plus, you never know what you're gonna find. The things that I find at thrift stores are unique, crazy pieces. My rule that I have when I go to buy something is if I search this on Amazon, could I find it right now? And if I could find it on Amazon really fast, I don't get it. But if it's some unique, crazy, insane piece, like a jean bleach dyed jacket with puka shells sewed into it and a whole pattern across the top where you can see through it, I got that today. Turquoise embroidery on the side. Like, you can't find that anywhere. So, if you guys would like to support sustainable shopping, try out thrifting. You never know. You might absolutely love it. But remember, the fast fashion corporation industry that our present world economy has created is not good for us, nor was it ever designed to be sustainable in the first place. Thrifting and going to estate sales and goodwills and flea markets is the way of the future. And if we want to protect our planet and make sure that 92 million metric tons of product waste from fabric does not end up in landfills every single year we're gonna have to make a change and that change is gonna have to start with you and me peace